countdown to eternity starts now. Well, hello, my dear brothers and sisters. We want to welcome you to another episode of Countdown to Eternity. And folks, I have to tell you, I have decided that the title we are going to put on the show today is the Biden regime is about to make the biggest mistake in American history. Now, before we get into what that mistake is, I am with my absolute best friend and colleague, Dale Quimby, Pastor Dale Quimby. And we, bro, have a lot to talk about. I, yes. I, I, I am blown away at where things are going right now with our country. I don't even want to get into the ridiculousness of what happened with the former president. There's a lot of aspects of what's going on that I don't really want to get into because we won't be able to get into the main topic but we first have to start with where we are going and how we got there. Right. So why don't we talk about that first? You know, so you're saying we're about to make the biggest mistake we've ever made. We've kind of been making that mistake over and over. Oh, uh, listen, a hundred percent. But I think where we're going to go in just mm. a minute, especially as it relates to Europe and Israel yeah. and some of the other nations that surround us, we, we are literally going to enter into the point of no return. I think we're kind of already there. We're definitely standing, teetering, like on the edge of a cliff. Yeah. And it starts with a passage that I think is appropriate to bring up. And I, I, I'm going to pull it up because I think it's important for us especially when we talk about understanding the biblical foundation for why we come to the conclusions that we come to. And this passage is found in the book of Proverbs, okay? So this is in Proverbs 28, and I just think there's a lot of wisdom here. And it says this, it says in Proverbs 28, verse 5, it says, evil people do not understand justice, But those who seek the Lord understand it all. Now, I like the way the King James words it. The King James says, Evil men understand not judgment, but they that seek the Lord understand all things. I think that what's happened here is we have started with an abandonment of a relationship with Jesus Christ. The country has walked away from it. I think that the people leading the country walked away from it a long time ago, and that is why we are where we're at right now. We are beginning this broadcast uh, literally on the heels of the month of June, which Mm -hmm. used to be a month that I really enjoyed, but now has become a month that I actually hate because it is Pride Month, and we know that God hates pride. Right. We are looking at what accompanies the decision-making process of the current administration and what's going on with them. And I'm telling you, bro, this is, we are literally in a time and in a season that is getting darker and there's no real explanation for it other than it's completely spiritual. So let's get into this a little bit, bro. Why don't we talk about this? Why this is happening? What's going on? What's going through your mind as you're seeing this stuff? The first thing that I think of is that we see this in the general mindset of most of our countrymen, at least here, right? I think it's actually in other parts of the world, it's worse. But the absolute lack of the fear of God, and we know, like you mentioned, Proverbs, the fear of God is the beginning of knowledge, right? This is the basis of wisdom. And I think... there is a general idea or a general mindset that most of the people have in our country that is absent of the fear of God. It's just completely absent. It's vacant from that. We can we need to make better decisions or we need to improve or whatever, but they're actually not they do not have any education in the reality of who God is in the reality of who they are in light of who God is and what a precarious position that they're in as long as they continue to reject God's authority in their life. And this is happening all around. Yep. I mean, when you watch the news, uh, it really takes something horrific to happen before people start saying, oh, 
uh, you know, sin, my prayers are with you or whatever. And even now it's becoming flaky, like, you know, good thoughts. Yeah, my thoughts are with my you. My thoughts are good, with you. Sending thoughts your way. It's becoming secularized. Yeah. And even a lot of the things that people sought out from their uh, upbringing in Christianity, the world has secularized those things in one way or another. And basically taken God completely out of every aspect of it. You know, I mean, we know God was removed from the, the public school system. More day by day by day, we are becoming more secularized, but the mindset's already there. Bro, it's funny you talk about God being taken out of the school system. I, I remember stories that people used to tell me, like, and I'm not kidding, where kids back in the listen, when we were kids in right. school. In even in California, there was a point in time where a kid wouldn't even be looked at weird if they bought a gun to show and tell. Like I'm not kidding you. Hmm. Like you could. Th there was a point in time where you could pull into a high school parking lot, even in Southern California, and you would see trucks in the parking lot with their doors unlocked. Windows rolled down and shotgun racks loaded with shotguns in the back of the car, you know, hanging in the window. Yep. And there were no shootings in schools. The, right. As a matter of fact, it's interesting. When you start looking at the academic performance of students in schools, you see a substantially lower score that starts right after the mid 60s. As a matter of fact, when you start looking at the, the decline that we begin to see, you begin to recognize very quickly that there was a massive drop right after the mid-60s. And the only thing that changed with respect to what happened in the school system is that God was taken out of schools. Right. Bi Bible uh, reading was not in the curriculum anymore. The kids weren't allowed to pray. The only way that they were able to do anything that related to, to anything structured that even remotely related to God was through a, uh, a, a I guess for lack of a better term, a, a school club, mm -hmm. right? So, I mean, when you stop for a minute to just reflect on what's happened, are we surprised? We shouldn't be. I mean, Jesus said, if you're not for me, you're against me, right? And Jesus came to destroy the work of the devil. So... If you oppose that, you're basically on the devil's side. I mean, I, it, it sounds like uh, simplistic talk, but that explains very easily all that's taking place. And if we pretend like, oh, well, you know, uh, it's there's more to it than that. Well, we need to step back and just look at it and say, hold on. When we... When we put somebody into a political office, when we put them in a teaching position, when we put them in as a judge, and these people are people that reject the authority of God, that means they're on the wrong side. Yeah, 100%. And, and what comes out of that is bound to be a disaster. It, it just is. The whole world right now is deluding itself into thinking it's not going to end in disaster. And yet, it is getting worse and worse. I mean, you would think with all of the advances we have in information sharing and technology and all of this stuff, you would think our society would be growing so much stronger and what's actually happening to it? It's breaking down. Yeah. And people, they want to pretend like, hey, you know, it's just this or that. Well, this is the problem. People are replacing God in their life with all of these things, their, their ideologies are actually opposed to God. The way they're living their life opposes God. And it's bringing a lot of trouble and a lot of destruction to our world. Yeah, un undoubtedly. And this is exactly what the Bible talks about when we talk mm -hmm. about the spirit of Antichrist. There is a removal of the collective consciousness of God and the individual consciousness of God by the replacing of God. Uh, and, and that's the idea. If I can replace God, then the collective consciousness of the true living God is gone. You think about it like this. If I want a whole society to walk away from an understanding that uh, there is a God and you're not him, 
and you must bow down and worship him, if I want to remove society of that collective consciousness or individual responsibility to that, then what has to happen, and this is like really, really important to the devil, and this is really important to the spirit of Antichrist, is you have to get these same people to believe they themselves are God. Right. That's what has to happen. Yeah. And, and people are talking that way. They have been for a long time. And, and they talk about that, and, and yet nobody like thinks about this even with a shred of logic and says, okay, I'm God, but, or if I'm God, why am I struggling with X, Y, and Z? Right. I mean, when you think about um, so many of the problems that are happening in the world right now, like there has been a massive increase in uh, people with, you know, mental instability from their own self-conscious or, um, you know, concern about how they're being received by others or whatever. It's people are very insecure. Insecurity is driving so many people's lives these days. And how can you reconcile? Oh, I'm, I'm insecure. I, I'm having all these issues, and then at the same time think, "Well, I'm I'm God." Well, that's the thing. Look, <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's a, it, it, and it's a good point that you bring. Insecurity comes from a lack of understanding of what's actually definitive and absolute. When you yeah. remove the lines of what's definitive and absolute, then you're going to experience internal insecurities. And the way you seek to bolster whatever you might lack in confidence because of your lack of understanding of what is real is the creation of some type of subset of information that gets you to believe that everything is okay when in reality nothing is okay. And, and, and the only way that you can combat that, the only way you get around that is by pursuing the only source of truth that we know exists and that's right. the word of God. And if you know the word of God, then you can find confidence even in who you are because you, as a child of God, are in Christ. Your confidence is in him. And so regardless of what decision uh, may come forth, if it's based on the word of God, you don't have to be worried about it. it regardless of the situation that you might find yourself in uh, with a circumstance that might appear to be or feel like it's questionable because of the pressures of the world, you can still walk in confidence because you know that what you're doing is based on biblical precedent. And if what you're doing is based on biblical precedent, then you're also able to not only lead, but in your leadership, you're, be, you're, you're demonstrating to people the strength of what happens in the heart and the mind of a person when completely given to and regulated by the Spirit of God. Right. Absolutely. I mean, Jesus said, basically, uh, this is like building a house on the sand. When you do that, you have to pretend that thing's going to be okay. But God actually doesn't just let us embrace lies without actually his spirit convicting us and getting to us. Like you can't just walk in that deception because God's spirit will always remind you, no, that's not true. You're, you're pursuing something that's not true. And so, yeah, a lot of these insecurities come out of that. The houses built on sand because the foundation is built on lies. Right. Hmm. And I mean, we see this, this is happening all over the world right now. You see it in the lives of the individuals, and then you see it literally being played out in the world, in the governments of the world. Right. They're playing this out, and they're not even taking a minute to stop and like heed the warnings. That's right. Right? You see this. You see uh, decision after decision being made, and... It's really interesting in the U.S. because we have, you know, a Christian foundation in this country, and yet that is really being shunned. That's right. It's completely being shunned. And like our president at times pretends that that's part of who he is and then celebrates so much wickedness. Yeah. And and literally um, makes decisions to bolster and to reinforce wickedness. 
Yeah, we're, we're going to get into the discussion of what this great mistake is and what's happening and what could, in essence, be the beginning of the literal end. But before we do, I'll give you one example of this. I, I'm a big aviation person. I, I love everything that there is about aviation. And, uh, of course, uh, organizations that relate to aviation, I follow online. And uh, I opened up the uh, social media feeds, and I saw that the Federal Aviation Administration put up a post that said, Happy Pride Month. That's right. With the pride colors, pride design, all of that. And I, and I decided, just for the heck of it, I was going to go back and look through the history of their posts. Did you know that they did not do anything about Easter? They did not put up a post. This is no joke. Merry Christmas. There was not even a post on Thanksgiving. There was a post on safety related to transporting your turkey. There, it, it, none, I'm telling you, even the 4th of July, there was no happy Independence Day. Yet somehow, some way, the Federal Aviation Administration, under the leadership of this evil man, sees it admirable and okay somehow, some way, to drop this woke nonsense into yeah. their representations. At one time, that would have shocked us, right? Yeah. But honestly, it's not even a surprise. Even in that, you see how there's actually... Like these two things cannot coexist. You, you know, you it would be you would have to be hypocritical in one way or the other to put, you know, like a happy Easter post and then happy Pride Month. People are trying it. But they're not even putting up happy Easter but posts. I know they're not talking about the resurrection of Jesus. They're not saying happy nope. resurrection day. They're not saying they're not even saying happy Easter. They're not even putting up a, a Easter bunny picture. They're right. not even gonna take a secularized version of it. And put it up. And probably until this point, their policy has been like, we're just not going to mess around with any of this. But then all of a sudden they decide, oh, hey, well, we're going to. I don't even know what their motivation is other than. I'll tell you the motivation. <laughs> we're approaching a voting season. Yeah. That's motivation. Yep. And so any federal agency that can post up like this, they will so that they can get whatever extra vote it is. But let me tell you why this is becoming a fatal mistake. When you don't know God and you have no desire to want to walk with God, then you become extraordinarily incapacitated. You become so drunk out of your mind. Your sobriety is so remarkably lost that you continue to make some really bad decisions. And what are yeah. some of the decisions we're talking about here? Okay, first of all, the United States of America has undoubtedly, without a doubt, the United States of America has chosen to take a stand against the position of Israel. Yep. The United States of America, as it relates to the leadership of one Joe Biden and the State Department that he continues to direct, continue to say that they will not stand behind Israel on a bunch of levels. We're not just talking about the level of them trying to defend themselves and the right to self-determination. We're also talking about what's going on with the Yemeni Houthis. We're, we're, we're talking about things that are happening in the Mediterranean. We're talking about augmenting or supplementing uh, operations that could dramatically affect the stability of Israel as it relates to what's happening in Turkey or Lebanon. We continue to get it wrong and we continue to make these horrible mistakes. And while we continue to deny our closest ally in the region, we're also taking the extra step to make sure that we engage in World War III a lot more actively than we have been engaging in it. Yes, and I do say we're in technically a world war because we meet the technical definition for a world war. And now look at the position that the president of the United States is beginning to, in essence, create with Europe. And what's actually happening? He is about to authorize aggressive action towards Russia, which yeah. will be, in essence, the greatest mistake we have ever made to date. Because here's the thing. The greatest mistake ever made was the position that he took towards Israel, which weakened our overall stance. It completely de demolished us from the inside out. Now, in our, in our most vulnerable state, he's going to choose to attack when we need all the proverbial immunity we can get. Yeah. So he gets us weak, and then in the weakest position, he then invites destruction. Yeah. 
And you know, when you see this, like all of this playing out with uh, the t- decisions made being made with Israel and the United States, I remember a time when I was a kid. I don't remember. Uh, there was some hostage situation, and the U- the stance of the United States back then was we do not negotiate with terrorists. That's right. The reality of the world now is we've funded them. That's right. And, and we, I mean, they had to relist Hamas as a terrorist organization, right? And they were acting like these guys were all right. Yep, that's right. Yeah. And, I mean, and with Yemen, in the Yemeni Houthis, the, the same thing. Yeah. And, and there was no evidence that that there was a change of ideology or a, uh, a philosophical change amongst these groups, right? And we just, we've completely turned our back on like a, a rational stance here. And honestly, like the, the Biden administration has worked so much instability in the region of the Middle East. You know, I mean, uh, the president said he stands unequivocally with Israel and then doesn't. He doesn't. Not even close. That's what's going to come out of that is instability. He sends money to all of these different groups. What's what's going to come out of that? These groups are all in opposition there's going to be instability. We send aid that's basically stolen by Hamas, right? And we keep trying. It's it's mind-boggling, like hard to even fathom. And then you get into Europe and you get into the situation with Russia and Ukraine, and literally Putin has been saying, this is why, this is what, this is why, this is what, like, Very, he's been very articulate with the entire world and like literally uh, it's been ignored. I'm sure, I'm sure uh, they know about it, right? You can find all of this stuff out there, but it's being ignored. Oh yeah. Yeah. And it is literally, Putin has recently said, this is a miscalculation. And that's basically what you're saying. Yeah. You're saying what the guy is doing is when you have as a foundation a lie, when you are building on the sand like that, the basis for what you're making your decisions on is not, it doesn't add up. It's a miscalculation. That's right. It's 100% correct. You know? and, and the real miscalculation that Putin is talking about, by the way, when he talks about this through his security agents, is the fact that the United States makes the arrogant assumption that they are going to be able to somehow bully Russia into stopping or slowing down their position or even potentially get Russia to think that somehow they're going to be defeated. When in reality, we are not equipped in the United States of America to face another proxy war. We're certainly not equipped in the United States of America to create a war theater on the front of Europe. We are certainly uh, in no position to engage in any Eurasia uh, type of a, a conflict by any stretch of the imagination. And perhaps the greatest mistake that we will ever make in our history is to allow ourselves to be engaged on all of these fronts while completely not realizing that we are ill-equipped to enter into that place because we have weakened our position based on the embrace of that which is wicked and you know this is the thing when you're when you're not walking with the lord you become blind to your weaknesses right and i i firmly believe the united states is there and you're like since we're talking about pride when a man walks in pride right he becomes blind to the things that would take him down Hmm. right and we're there. Yeah, Putin, that's right. And I think even Putin says basically, hey, he he said it. Heed this warning. That's right. We look at our world. We think we're so advanced. We have all of this stuff going for us, right? But when you look at the United States military and 
if they got engaged in warfare, there are variables that cannot be predicted. Yes. And, you know, like I, I'm reading all this stuff all the time. We're always conducting drills and we're figuring out things. We're doing war games to figure out our weaknesses. And we've found, the U.S. has found repeatedly that our aircraft carriers are easily sunk by old submarines. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because, look, we, we don't manage anything correctly. We're not building anything correctly. Yeah. This is not build back better. This is destroy ourselves because we've chosen to walk away from the true living God. Dale, I'm going to give you the last word because we're out of time. And this, this conversation has gone by pretty quickly. But any, yes, any, any, any last thoughts on this? I mean, my last thoughts are this is this is where we start because I, I know everybody is going to wa- uh, watch, listen. They're going to say, like, okay, what do we do about yeah. it? First step that you do about it is evaluate where you are at personally with the Lord. That's right. Right? That's the first step because, honestly, um, we can blame uh, politicians, but there's a part of this that falls on us. We need to walk in the fear of the Lord as individuals. And then we, when you're walking in the fear of the Lord— Allow the Lord to lead you and speak up about this mm-hmm. stuff, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, that's what that's what we're here doing. Yep. And the more people that take this seriously and say, you know what, I'm gonna I'm gonna say what needs to be said, uh, the more that is going to become a part of what uh, is being heard on a national level. Yeah, I would agree with you. I would agree with you. And I think that um, the nation needs to repent. I think that that's what needs to happen, and we need to pray that change takes place, and we also need to be people who actively work in the direction of change. But this is a spiritual issue, and um, the only way it's going to get fixed is by spiritual means. And look, make no mistake about it, Mm. we're definitely near the end here, right? But that doesn't absolve us from the responsibility of engaging and being a part of the solution. Because I'm telling you right now, we are rapidly headed towards the point of no return. Let's do this really quickly, and then we'll we'll wrap it up. It's something we don't do a lot on Countdown to Eternity. Let's pray and ask for God's hand to be upon this nation, that he would uh, that he would save the nation, and that he would bring it to a place of reconciliation. Father, in the name of Jesus, we do give this to you, Lord, knowing and understanding that you are sovereign, knowing and understanding that you are God. And first and foremost, Lord, we say that as a nation, we repent, Lord. We repent of the wickedness that we've chosen to embrace. We repent of the denial of the true and living God, Lord. We repent of the mindset that says, I assume the position of the true and living God, the role, the action, the function. Lord, that's not us. Lord, there is there is only one God, and we're not we're not him. Lord, we know that it's you. So, Father, we come to you saying we're sorry, and we ask, Lord, that you would please, Father, spare our nation, Lord. And, Lord, we know that you're coming back soon. We pray, God, that you would give us a heart and a mind to understand that, to think about that, and to rely upon that very fact. So, Lord, we love you and thank you. We look to you, and we ask these things in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, my brothers and sisters, we do love you. And on that note, may God richly bless you as you continue The whole goal here to look to Christ as we count down to eternity. God bless you. We love you.